get started, we'd like to welcome Brooks Kepka into the virtual interview room here at the Vivint Houston Open. Brooks, you last played this tournament in 2016. Uh, if we can get you to talk a little bit about your role as a player consultant here on our course at Memorial Park. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, Tom, obviously, I, I think did a great job with this place. It's, um, you know, from the moment we kind of sat down at Floridian to kind of discuss some things and um, how, what I thought, you know, would be good in a golf course. And he had his ideas and I had mine and then combined them. And this is what, um, this is what you get. I think it's a very tough golf course, um, you know, with the rough being the way it is, you, you've got to put the ball in the fairway and then it's a second shot golf course. You really have to put good strike on the ball, be able to spin it, um, be good with your long irons. There's, there's quite a few long holes, um, but at the same time, it's, it makes it quite fun uh, if you do miss the green because you have so many options. You could putt it, you could bump and run it, you could flop it. Um, it really gives the player a lot of options too if they miss the green where um, I, I feel like you're never, you're never quite out of it. Uh, you're making uh, just your second start of the 2020-21 season. Uh, how's your health, first of all, and the state of your game? Uh, I feel great. I feel better than I did even three weeks ago, two weeks ago, whatever I did at Vegas. So um, that's behind me now. I feel um, as good as ever. And, um, you know, just go out and play. Um, you know, need some, need some reps uh, just because it feels like it's been so long. And, um, that's why we're playing this week. Media to turn on your video function and unmute your computer uh, when you're called on. We're going to start with Richard Dean with the Houston Chronicle. Richard, do you have a question? Okay, let's go to uh, let's go to Dan Musel. Hey, Brooks, uh, you talked a little bit about the redesign. Is there any part of it that now that on site looking at it, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that turned out really great. Is there any part that uh, you like better than others? Yeah, I think the finishing stretch. Uh, obviously, I, I knew it was going to be fun uh, when you look at the, the map. I mean, we walked it around. We walked around this place. Um, I forget what it was. It might have been a year and a half, two years ago um, when it was just dirt, nothing there. Um, and, you know, you could see the undulations on the greens. Um, the greens were kind of uh, built up. They had all the dirt, basically. All they had to do was lay sod. And it, uh, it was quite interesting. I thought 15, 16, 17 w was going to be quite an interesting stretch. Um, you know, 15, it, I, I told Tom I really just wanted a short part of three that was very brutal, where if you missed the green, um, you could make double, uh, definitely making bogey. Um, you know, who knows, maybe even triple um, if you miss it in the wrong spot. So, um, and then 16, gettable par five, and, uh, and 17, I think. If they move the tee up, um, you know, you could drive that green, you can feed it in off the left-hand side if you hit a cut. Um, it, it could be really an exciting finish depending on where they put the tees, how the wind is. Um, and you could really lose a lot of shots there or you can make up with quite a bit. Quite a bit. Been calling that Amen Corner there, the yeah, Memorial Park version, 15, 16, 17. What do you think it gives you an advantage, Brooks, because you were part of the redesign here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen so many different versions of this place from the, the first, I guess, architectural designs to um, basically you know, playing it today. I mean, there's been, I don't know how many versions of it, but it's been quite interesting to see the little things change, the, the subtleties that uh, maybe a lot of people would never notice. Um, it, it's been fun. I've, I've enjoyed the process. It's been cool, um, you know, just to put my, I guess, hand in something else other than just, you know, playing golf to design thing, you know, to help Tom. I mean, this is, I'll be honest with you, I give Tom all the credit. He came up with 99. 0.9% of them, and I just kind of threw in a couple ideas here and there, but, um, you know, he's a hell of an architect, designer, um, so it was fun to work with him. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Mark Berman with Fox 26. Hey, thank you. Bruce, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Um, can you talk about uh, your relationship with Jim Crane 
and what it means for you to be here to help support him in his first tournament at Memorial Park. Yeah, I thought, you know, when there was talks of this uh, a couple years ago, um, you know, Jim was, was saying that he wanted to, to take over the, the Houston Open, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, you know, with everything they've got going, um, you know, they're so big in Houston, just the city that they do, obviously, with um, the Astros, with his business. Um, it's been – it's a tournament I always wanted to play just to help support him. I feel like um, we've had a great relationship over the last, I don't know, five years. Um, you know, even coming here, the last time we were here, going out um, and just having dinner with him and his family and um, – just sitting talking, just different things, business to, um, you know, what's going on with the, the Astros to, it, it's just life advice. And I think it's, it's been very, very good for me. Um, and hopefully it's been, you know, enjoyable for him. I, I know I've enjoyed it and get to know him and his family. Um, but I, this was always going to be on the schedule for me just to support him, um, everything he's done. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to this week. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have much hope there for a, for a minute, but uh, you know, when they when they got out to San Diego, they they made it interesting. That's for sure. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed baseball, so I was watching every game, and um, I know we were texting back and forth uh, with Giles um, and when they were on the plane on the way out there. So it's uh, rooting for them. You're a workout uh, maniac, work, workaholic when you're not on the golf course itself. What are you doing to satisfy your workout needs? Uh, here in Houston? Uh, just working out at Minute Maid. It's easy. There's no one there. Um, just me and my trainer. Maybe one of their trainers. Um, it might be in the building or security or whatever, but there's nobody there, which is nice. So we can get our get in, get out. Uh, don't have to see anybody. Don't have to put ourselves at risk. Um, it's, it's been quite nice. Um, they've got a good facility in there. It's perfect for what we need. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find places to work out um, when you're on the road because it's not – I know we have um, our trailer that goes around, but I need a little bit <laughs> more space, more weight, more, uh, more room to do, to do a lot of things. So it's, it's nice to have um, a place where I've gone before. I've worked out there um, multiple times, so it's nice to have a place I'm, I'm comfortable with. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Sean Martin with PGATour.com. Have you taken any swings at Minute Maid, any BP? No, I haven't. I should, though. I mean, we're in there. <laughs> I might as well. I don't know how well Derek throws the ball, but uh, it would be interesting to see. Um, I don't know. It would be fun. I, I mean, I would, I would love to. I'd love to go take BP. Um, I'll take BP anywhere. We, do, we used to do it um, with uh, all my buddies up in Boston because Boston would start on the Friday, and you get in on Sunday, and we'd go out there, and we'd sneak out to there. Their place at uh, UMass, and we'd go play. There were about 12 of us, um, and that was always a fun week. But your arm would be like hanging from pitching or throwing for for about four. <laughs> by Friday, you're like it's just starting to feel better. Uh, I did want to ask about architecture. Was that something you were interested in before this opportunity arose, and what was just your favorite part of kind of being part of building a golf course? Um, to be honest with you, I had no aspirations of ever being like I'm, I want to design golf courses. Nothing. But then, you know, being asked to do this, I was like, uh, it, it's a really cool idea. Um, obviously, wanted to help Jim, Jim out. Um, and I think anytime you can play a hand and having some opinion on a course that we're going to play out here, I think it's it's unique. It doesn't happen very often, um, and it, and it's been cool just to see it evolve. Um, I know this golf course is quite difficult. Um, it's quite long. Um, you'll see some high numbers, especially if the wind gets up. But, uh, I mean, it kind of resembles a little bit of a U.S. Open, I think, um, yeah. some people would say, which I feel like I've done, done pretty good at. You talked about the finish. Were there any other things that you wanted to bring to this golf course that maybe you don't see on tour as often as you would like from a course standpoint? Yeah, I think just visually, um, you know, you look at – uh, there's, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, five, I believe. There's a tree that overhangs on the left. Um, 
it, it's just interesting when you look at this place of how you visually have to look at it from the tee box and then looking back at it from the fairway, the landing spot, trying to, you know, my big thing was I, I didn't like when the, everything is flat. You look at a lot of these par fives, especially in the layup area, there's, there might be a little section where it's flat, but you've got a little bit of awkward lies sometimes. Um, you know, if you're going to lay it up, it makes that layup important. You know, especially if you're going to be in the rough, you've got to control the jumper, different things like that. And, you know, the par threes, I was never a big fan of the par threes, every par three being over 200 yards. Um, you know, I wanted, I wanted a real short one that's very penalizing. Um, one around like 175 and 195, I think that's fair. And then the other one you can just throw, which we got almost at 240. Um, but there's different ways to play that, you know, hole. you can run it in if you want, you can fly it on the green. There's just a whole lot of options, but I think having a variety of par threes is a big thing. Cool, thank you. Okay, uh, we've got time for a few more. Let's go to Dale Robertson with the Houston Chronicle. Hey Brooks, a uh, couple things. I remember we, we talked uh, when you were here after I guess, getting into the, the redesign and the thing that struck you, the, the, the particular fairway view where you kind of caught the downtown skyline. You, know, remember you, you reflect a little on that. It was, it, that's very unusual on the tour for all the obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, do, do, you remember, do you remember making that observation? Wow, what a, what a cool view. Wait a minute, which fairway is this? Yeah, I think it's, it's really neat uh, going off number one. Um, you know, your first hole of the tournament, or well, I guess not if you tee off in the back nine, but um, you know, Saturday, Sunday, it, it's a cool view. Looking out there, you get to see the, the skyline of Houston. It's, it's unique because we obviously don't play too many events um, this close to, you know, the downtown area, the, the actual city metropolitan area. So um, to have the skyline, I think is, it's, it's cool, it's unique. It's different for us. Um, it, you know, we don't get to see that and, um, you know, there's, it helps um, definitely picking out a building and, and trying to hit at it. And uh, the thing is, I've been a long curious about, uh, what, is it, what does it feel like playing without fans? Now, you're going to have some, again, this week, a couple thousand, uh, and certainly not what you're used to. How, how does that change the way it feels playing golf on the course? Does it feel like a practice round? I know you're playing for money and all of that, but uh, just can you weigh in on that a little bit? I mean, usually at our practice rounds, there's still – Quite a few people yeah. that are following yeah. us, so it's way different. Um, I definitely think the atmosphere isn't there. Um, you know, I, I noticed it especially at the PGA. I like think me and my caddy were talking about it in the second hole how we we were quite amazed, like the atmosphere just isn't there um, that you'd hear. And you know, it'd be interesting at Augusta next week. I know we got some fans here this week, which will help um, make it feel more, I guess, normal. Um, but we, you know, as players, we become accustomed to having so many people out there watching, cheering, you know, it makes you feel good when you make birdie, eagle, whatever, great par save, great shot, anything. Um, but it, it definitely is a different feel. It's weird. Um, I'm anxious to have fans back. So it, it, I mean, it motivates you. You know, you would think a sport like football, of course it'd make a difference because of the reaction. Sport, sport yours is very cerebral, but it's still, uh, it's interesting you would say that, that you, you're just not quite as pumped maybe as you would be as, Thousands of people ringing the fairway. Yeah, um, and it also too. I think it helps line the fairways a little bit too. Yeah, I think you know when you see fans down both sides, it really kind of helps to find your target. Where now it's, it's I don't want to say it's like stepping on a driving range, but uh, it's definitely a wider view. Um, you can see almost everything. Where sometimes you know the fans can block out half the bunker, um, depending on where they're at. So it's um, it makes it a little bit. Uh, more focus, uh, more challenging, but uh, I'm up for it. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Steve Hummer with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Yeah, Brooks, thanks. Uh, uh, two quick points. Uh, what, what do you want to see from your game this week to let you know you're ready for, for the Masters? Uh, I, I mean, I've seen everything I already need to see. I, I'm physically fine. You know, you can't judge a player when they're hurt. Um, and. <laughs> I've been pretty bad this year, so um, it's it's one of those things where you know at the PGA, even though I was struggling through it, um, my body just wouldn't allow me. I mean, I was right there. Uh, come Sunday, just my body wasn't gonna hold up, and um, it's unfortunate. But you know, now it's in a in a position where everything feels good, everything feels solid, and I, I can actually do what I want to do. I can finally hit the shots that I want to hit. I can hit draws, high draws, low fades, whatever. I, I feel like I can actually shape the ball. Um, 
and definitely a lot more confidence now that I can get on my left side. And can I ask you to, to think back to, to the last Masters and what your, your thoughts were leaving that place after coming so very close to winning? Uh, how much do you go back over the round and say, well, the putt had fallen on 17 or 18 or if something different happened on 12? Just, just I guess, what, what do you take from that experience and then uh, bring it forward to, to this Masters? Yeah, I mean, just putting yourself in contention again. That was really the big thing I got out of it. And um, I, I don't think about the round other than when you guys ask me. Um, yeah. It's just one of those things where I feel like, you know, if I hadn't backed off it on 12, um, I've said it a million times, I hit a good shot. Just I think we all know that wind swirls quite a bit there. And, you know, the other big thing is, too, I think Tiger made it look a lot closer than it was. You know, it was one shot, but he had a two-shot lead coming up the last, and all you got to do is make bogey to win. It's, it's a lot easier. Um, and he played it the exact way where he took double out of play and, you know, gave himself a look at par, almost made it, and he did everything right. Um, you know, 16, leave it, on the, um, leave it on that shelf was kind of a screw-up for me. But... Um, it is what it is. Um, I played good. And, you know, there's some weeks we just get beat. Thank you. Okay, our last question will be with Tim Schnitt from uh, Golf Week. Yeah, hey Brooks, I'm sorry we talked so much about the golf course, but I think that it's so fascinating. I was talking to one of the uh, the tour pros, I'm sorry, one of the uh, teaching pros who said, you know, they pulled uh, uh, mattresses and bicycles and all these other things out of the creek, I think by two What's it like to know that a municipal golf course like this, I think you can play for $21 during the week or something like that, that you were a part of a project like this that brings a municipal golf course back on the PGA Tour, which is kind of special for kids, you know, that are never going to get to play Augusta and Pebble and other places. Yeah, it's perfect for any fan or anybody that watches, you know, us play uh, the PGA Tour. You know, they can relate. Oh, wow, I've been there. I've been there in the exact same spot with pretty much that pin. They know the shot that we're we have in front of us or that we're trying to hit, so they can they feel our pain, <laughs> I guess sometimes, or they can uh, they can be like, wow, that was a hell of a shot. Um, you know, it's it's much more relatable for the fans, and I think that's what makes it so much fun. And this place obviously has been really affordable uh, to play, which is nice because golf sometimes is um, quite a bit expensive um, for most people and. You know, this driving range, um, I remember how busy this driving range was. Um, that was, you know, it was the only thing that was open when we came for the redesign and things like that. But they were just telling me how busy the driving range is all year and to make that like a double decker, I thought was pretty, pretty cool. And um, just a way to keep, you know, people involved in golf in Houston is, uh, and to have an impact on that, I think is, is special. Thank you. Appreciate it.